Welcome Bill to Middlesex Sugar Moments, Mark. coming to you from the Center for New Media at Middlesex Community College in Middletown. I'm Steve Minkler, the college CEO, and I'm here together with students in the college's studio television production course. You can't see them. They're behind the scenes running all of the equipment that makes Middlesex Moments happen. Don't worry. They're wearing masks and they're practicing social distancing while we record this show. I'm happy to report that the college's main campus reopened this summer after closing for about four months because of the COVID pandemic. Fall semester classes began on August 26th. We made a lot of important changes on campus and in our class schedule. So we have to think about it like Middlesex Community College is working like an online college with on-campus options. Before, we were a traditional college that had online options. So for the 2021 school year, about two-thirds of our classes are online. Students will need to have a computer with a reliable internet connection in order to enroll in online courses. The college has a small number of laptops and Wi-Fi hotspots to loan out through the library. We still have traditional on-campus classes, but a lot fewer of them. Those classes include st those for students who prefer face-to-face -face instruction and for classes like digital media, fine arts and sciences, all of which require special facilities like studios and labs. Class sizes will be much smaller so we can all observe social distancing. The seats must be six feet apart from each other. All students and employees must show their photo ID before entering a building and everyone, everyone must wear a facial mask and observe social distancing. Middlesex Moments reporter Joseph Nieves took a look around campus to see how things have changed. With fears of a second wave of coronavirus affecting our nation, many schools open amidst the chaos. We check out Middlesex Community College to see how they're handling their reopening plan. So we've done a lot on campus to get ready for the coronavirus. Obviously changed all the classrooms around to make our way for social distancing. We are sanitizing the campus much more frequently. There's markers on seats indicating not to sit here. Everybody has to wear a mask. We are enforcing that. So we're doing our best just to kind of keep the campus open, yet in a way that's safe for everyone. Generally, I try to distance myself if I do see large groups of people on campus. I also put my faith into students coming on campus. If they obviously have something wrong with them, they should take responsibility and stay home. Online classes have also been a big change for students as they come back for the fall semester. Now my classes are now like hybrid and online, so I have to come here, sometimes do it at home, so it's going back and forth. So it's kind of difficult, but it's kind of a new experience. I'm trying to adapt with it. Most of it has been turned over to a more online perspective. And that's why I've been taking more on-campus classes because I still want the ideal college experience. I like coming out to the campus and I like interacting with the people here, but again, I understand it's the only way to do this safely. You can't really replace the on-ground experience. That's why we have our campus open the best that we can to make sure that students can have that live experience that they want. I'm thankful every day that I don't have a residential campus. That residential portion is where we're seeing a lot of the spikes. I think it's because the students aren't doing what they were asked to do. If we're in it together and we do what we're supposed to do, we will lessen the opportunity for COVID to take over. Generally, people like to space themselves out and follow the rules here, which I really appreciate. Keep doing what we're doing because I believe we're flattening the curve. That's the best thing that we can do for one another. Remember to stay safe and stay healthy. This is Joseph Nieves reporting for Middlesex Moments. Thanks, Joseph, for that report. As a reminder, Middlesex Community College has a satellite center in the city of Meriden. We have a small selection of courses and tutoring services located at Platt High School, where we're open Monday through Thursday, 2.30 to 8.30 p.m. The college is constantly monitoring the public health status in our city, our region, and the state. We are working closely with the central office of the Connecticut State Colleges and Universities, the local Department of Public Health, and the governor's office to ensure that we are providing an environment that protects the health and safety of our college community. Thank you in advance for wearing your mask and observing social distance, not just on our campus, but wherever you are in public. Coming up after the break, more of Middlesex Moments from Middlesex Community College. I really had no idea of what I wanted to do, so I worked a lot of minimum wage jobs. And finally, I was just like, I just need to go back to school because I wanted to get a business degree. And Middlesex Community College was super convenient. I got a lot out of Middlesex. I never thought I would have reached this far with my associate's degree. It allowed me to buy a house. I was able to get married. It was, it was a dream. I 
I chose Middlesex because they had a lot of different programs that I was interested in. For me, it was just easier to come here part-time and also keep my job. Middlesex, I would say, helped me get my foot in the door in the news business. The Center for New Media has all the stuff that I see daily at News 8 to be able to jump on and say, I have experience with a control room. I have experience with a TV studio. It's definitely a good choice. Welcome back to Middlesex Moments, coming to you from Middlesex Community College. I'm Steve Minkler, the college CEO. My mother once told me that when I was about 9 or 10 years old, she noticed I started sitting closer and closer to the television. I also had a harder time reading signs along the side of the road. She realized, aha, that I should have my eyes examined. And indeed, I've been wearing eyeglasses or contact lenses ever since then, which for me is kind of a long time. I tell you that story because Middlesex Community College is the only public college in Connecticut to have a program that trains people to become licensed opticians. In fact, the Ophthalmic Design and Dispensing Program, yeah, that's its formal name, celebrated its 30th anniversary this year. The Middlesex Moments crew, under producer Stephanie Finaldi, caught up with Ray Dennis, one of the founding professors of the program. My name is Ray Dennis, and I am the founding coordinator of the Ophthalmic Design and Dispensing Program here at Middlesex. Our first classes began in September of 1988. I was actually hired to start working in May of that year, but came up here to get it started, design the curriculum, and implement the program for our first students in September of 1988. There was a group of licensed opticians that worked in various optical businesses around the state that were involved in the Connecticut Opticians Association, AC state trade group for licensed opticians, and among them was uh, a gentleman by the name of Rene Skip Rivard, and Skip was uh, one of the people that pushed that group to uh, petition the state of Connecticut to start a program, and sent Skip to a, a national convention where a group called the National Federation of Opticianry Schools was meeting. I happened to be at that meeting. That was in Reno in June of 1987. From the very beginning, it was our goal to develop a curriculum here at Middlesex that would allow it to be immediately uh, certified uh, and accredited, and uh, that was, in fact, the case. We were in 1990 when we graduated our first class. We were actually the first program in the country to receive a two-year accreditation immediately after graduating a class. We do have or have had many changes over the years, and it's, it's primarily differences in the way we approach the making of eyeglasses, different technologies for the fabrication of them, different lens products and materials that are certainly a lot better at correcting vision problems that we were unable to correct in the past. I've worked almost 30 years here. It was wonderful. It was a great experience. This place is, is a great place for people to get an opportunity. And the college offers some uh, courses that are very helpful in making decisions about what direction you might want to go. And if you're not convinced this is the place for you, there's lots of people around here that can help you to find a way to do something different. And with me today is the current faculty program director of Ophthalmic Design and Dispensing, Dr. Arlen Aceto. Welcome, Arlen. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me here. This is uh, uh, great. Good. It was great to hear Ray's voice, right? I mean, he just has that booming classroom voice. Well, uh, retired a few years ago, right? Just recently, actually. He, he was uh, here at the inception uh, and uh, 30 years. And what was really cool about that is I was one of his students. Uh, I'm actually a graduate of the program here. Um, back in the early 90s, I was here, and it's uh, undergone a lot of changes and a lot of improvements, but it's, it's, it's been fantastic. Yeah. In fact, all the faculty who are currently with the program, all our graduates. Absolutely. Um, uh, all of our graduate, all of our faculty, our uh, 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 educational assistants, lab assistants, uh, they're all previous graduates of the program. And in a lot of cases, we went out, uh, uh, got more uh, experience, uh, went and got our uh, more practical and clinical experience, and in my case I actually went back and became a, a doctor of optometry, but we all came back because we have this really uh, sort of overwhelming desire to teach. Uh, so, and, and here we are, uh, really making differences. So a student who's interested in this program uh, might want to know uh, what kind of work does an optician do and how does that differ from other people who are in the optical field? Sure, so uh, in the eye care field, uh, uh, there are three O's, we call it. Uh, the first is uh, an ophthalmologist, and an ophthalmologist is a medical doctor uh, who goes to med school, uh, uh, goes, gets a four-year undergrad degree first, goes to med school, and then afterwards specializes in eye surgeries. Uh, 
uh, optometrists uh, undergo a four-year undergrad degree, then go to optometry school for four years, and oftentimes uh, a one-year residency. And they're doctors, and they can prescribe uh, contacts and glasses. Uh, they can treat and diagnose ocular diseases. And then opticians, uh, they are the ones that take the prescriptions from optometrists and ophthalmologists and can fit eyewear solutions, eyeglasses, low vision devices. Or what's really neat about the state of Connecticut is it's one of the few states in the nation where licensed opticians for the state can fit and dispense and evaluate contact lenses without the oversight of a licensed doctor. Uh, so it's really a unique uh, uh, scope. Now, what could a licensed optician in the state of Connecticut do? There's a whole host of things. We have folks that work in private practice opticianry programs, uh, uh, offices. We have corporate opticianry, uh, big box stores. We have our graduates work with licensed optometrists, licensed ophthalmologists. Some of our uh, students go into uh, industry to become sales representatives. Uh, some of us. Uh, go into teaching, uh, not the most lucrative, but it's the most rewarding, uh, right. so wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, but there really is almost no limit to what a student could do based on their personality, based on, based on, on what they like to do, uh, but it's a great healthcare field to get into. Absolutely, and be because it's a healthcare field, you, you used a magic word earlier, license. Yes, yep. Now, what does that mean? A student who graduates from our program, do they have to take a test? They or do, what? yep. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the, the, the way that one becomes licensed, uh, and each state is different, Massachusetts, New York, Connecticut, um, but upon successful graduation from our program, uh, a person is uh, eligible to sit for state licensure. There are a few other national standardized tests that you have to take prior uh, to sitting for the licensure uh, when you're gradu after you've graduated. Um, our students tend to have a 100% pass rate on both of those two national certification exams, but the real crowning pinnacle event is, the, is passing the state licensing exam, and that's really where uh, our students do very well compared uh, to, to other, uh, they do very well in the state licensing uh, test compared to different cohorts. Right. And I know to become licensed, you have to uh, have gone through a program like ours mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. through a significant yep. so the two uh, ways training that, program, right? The, the two ways that you would normally do it is you can either do a four-year apprenticeship program uh, where you would work under the tutelage and the direct supervision of a licensed optician for four years with a minimum of 8,000 hours. Uh, n when people go that route, they're, they're sometimes very well versed in certain areas, but not others. There's a lot that an optician has to do. In our school, it's a, uh, you can, in lieu of the four-year 8,000-hour apprenticeship requirement, you can come to a uh, accredited program uh, like ours, and we're the only one in the public school system here in the state of Connecticut. And after a two-year program with an associate's degree from here, you can uh, use that in lieu of the 8,000 apprenticeship mm -hmm. hours. And... Uh, so it's, it's a, and I feel that it's a, a more comprehensive because we do cover everything from stem to stern, the anatomy, the physiology, the background. We teach the why, uh, as we say for the National Federation of Artillery School members. Uh, we uh, really have a very strong contact lens. Uh, we fit, evaluate, and, and, and teach students all about soft contacts, rigid gas permeable contacts. We even have scleroprosthetic shell uh, uh, wet labs. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a very in-depth contact lens uh, curriculum and overall curriculum. Okay. And I would imagine that curriculum can get pretty specific in, in a lot of its content, a lot of science there. So, so kind of maybe walk our audience a little bit through what some of the key courses are in this, the two-year program. So the, like any other associate's degree program in, in our college, there are a lot of general ed education uh, requirements. But in addition to the general education requirements, which really present a really well-rounded degree, we also have uh, a class on anatomy and physiology of the eye, which gives us the foundation of how the eye is created. There's a, 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 uh, it's a pretty in-depth class. There are uh, an entire eyeglass track where there's a clinical component and then a uh, 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 theoretical component. There's a second track that is contact lens related. Uh, we have a low vision class where uh, we have some folks that, despite the doctor's best intentions, things don't always work out 100%. Well, we have a special class where we teach our students how to help people with visual uh, uh, impairments to use what they have more successfully with devices, technology, that type. And we also have a, an op optical business management course as well. So between the sciences and the business aspect and the really full scope education, it's, it's, a, it's a very complete uh, program. And what's the job market like? Job markets, I, can't, I don't go a week, never a month, without someone calling and say, we need graduates of yours. We need folks. There's, there's a huge demand, uh, and that's sort of indicated by 
we have an aging population with the baby boomers, more people than ever need uh, eyeglasses. We have uh, an increase in the levels of myopia because of what we're doing lifestyle-wise. There's, there's a higher incidence and more severe cases of myopia worldwide. Um, our services are more and more necessary every single year. In our state, uh, nationwide, the Bureau of Labor Statistics in their most recent uh, 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 figures in the state of Connecticut, the average licensed optician in the state of Connecticut makes $56,000 a year once they're licensed. And that's pretty good coming out of a two-year two program. Degree. Absolutely. Um, and, and if you're interested, you could then continue your education and become the next, go through the O's. So absolutely. To speak, right? You can always move that. And it doesn't even have to be an O. The, our program, uh, and, and all throughout the community college system, we have such a diverse student body in terms of first-time students. We have adult students coming back for second careers. Um, and in and, and, and uh, uh, all walks of life and all backgrounds, an incredibly diverse uh, group of students in our program especially, and we have some folks that this is going to be their forever job. Mm -hmm. We have other folks they are using this as an opportunity to have a great part-time job that may pay well, may, may be more rewarding, may have better working conditions than some other job, uh, uh, a part-time job, if they're going to law school, if they're going to become a teacher, if they're going to engineering, or if they want to go to optometry school, which mm -hmm. Since I've done it, uh, I, after I graduated in the 90s, I went back to the University of Connecticut, uh, graduated with a degree from there, and then applied to the New England College of Optometry about 10 years later. I was a little bit later bloomer, um, and then uh, graduated with a degree, uh, a doctorate of optometry, and I'm a practice it, practicing licensed optometrist in addition to um, doing this. So there really is no limit to what our students can do, either within the industry or what they can continue on to do. That's fantastic. Well, we got to jump away for a quick mm -hmm. break, but I'm really excited because after the break, we're going to get to see some of the labs that Dr. Aceto and his colleagues teach in, in our ophthalmic design and dispensing program. This is Middlesex Moments coming to you from Middlesex Community College. I was homeschooled, and after doing a lot of research, I found MXCC, and it looked like a really good fit for me because I wanted to transfer to UConn, and they have the Pathways program. Being homeschooled, it was nice to have smaller classes. The professors really helped me understand the material. I really felt that Middlesex was invested in my education. It's one of the greatest experiences I've had. So the reason I chose the Middlesex Veterinary Technology Program uh, was because of all the opportunities it had with Piper Olson Veterinary. There's no other place where you would have access to that. I would definitely recommend Middlesex to anybody who's interested in that career because you're going to be 100% prepared to start your job. That is really empowering. Starting back in high school um, was not the best student, and so I decided that Middlesex was the best option for me. You have a lot of support here. I had professors that cared about me, mm -hmm. that pushed me in ways. I went to Middlesex Community College and transferred to Wesleyan University with a full scholarship, and it's all because I did well at Middlesex. Welcome back to Middlesex Moments from Middlesex Community College. I'm Steve Minkler, the college CEO, and I'm here with my guest, Dr. Arlen Aceto, who is the director of our ophthalmic design and dispensing program, just a fancy name for opticianry or, or eyeglasses, right? Correct. So this is my favorite part of the show where we're going to show you or describe to you the laboratory facilities where Dr. Aceto and his colleagues work together with our students to train them to be opticians. Sure, and so this is actually our eyeglass lab. Uh, we have two major tracks in our program. One is a contact lens, program and the other is the eyewear uh, eyeglasses, eyeglass lenses and what have you. Uh, and this is the eyewear uh, facility, this is the eyewear lab. Not only do we, do we teach the theoretical aspect of what we're doing, but there's a really, really uh, advanced and very uh, comprehensive hands-on component. Now one of the most important things is eye care in general, opticianry, optometry and ophthalmology has always been a very hygienical and very safe uh, uh, industry, but with COVID we've had to become doubly so. Uh, and so we used to have a, a, a larger uh, more students crammed in here because we, it's a very popular program. Uh, we've actually changed the setup here to maintain social distancing. So we actually have the plexiglass contain, uh, uh, barriers to make sure that people don't spread anything. We have six feet in between. And what's really neat about this is we've changed our entire lab setup 
so that we only have no more than six people per lab session, uh, which is great because one, it keeps people safer during these uncertain times, and two, and just as importantly, now we get to even spend more one-on-one -on -one time uh, with the students teaching things like the lensometer or vertometer. Uh, this device is sort of the uh, centerpiece of how opticians work. It actually reads eyeglass lens powers, uh, orientation, the amount of astigmatism, uh, whether or not there's bifocals. What's really neat is if we order a set of glasses, we can use this to verify that it's accurate, mm -hmm. or even better, we could take someone's existing pair of eyeglasses and find out exactly what the prescription is. Uh, and this is really one of those tools that we really spend a lot of time on showing the students how to do it. Um, and uh, in addition to, we have all the adjusting, all the repair kits, how to uh, adjust pairs of glasses, uh, the heaters and what have you. But not only do we, not only do we just look at how the glasses are made, but we actually make the glasses. This is our fabrication alley. And here we have an entire lane of equipment that's made specifically to turn the large prescription lenses uh, into a finished pair of eyeglasses. So we teach the students how to use these patternless edgers. Uh, there's different brands, different types. And so uh, our students are not just well versed in how things should be done, but how they're really done. Uh, and this is actually a very, very uh, considerable um, amount of our program. Uh, we actually make glasses not just for practice, but we make it for our real clinic, which we'll go to next, and we also do it for our outreach programs as well. Um, as part of our uh, program, well, the clinic is pretty exciting because, oh. you know, I, I actually got my eyeglasses here mm -hmm. at the college. Mm -hmm. right? and so um, that happens in here. I remember bringing my prescription here to the professors and to the students, picked out a pair of eyeglasses, and you guys manufactured them. And so we don't do the eye exams here, but what we right. do is we, when it's patients, and it could be students, could be faculty, could be staff, or it's actually open to the public, but we do have to uh, make appointments now because of the new COVID uh, uh, safety protocols. Uh, once you have a, a valid eyeglass prescription, if you bring it in here, this is something that you can... Uh, look through our selection of, we actually have a fair number of designer frames. Uh, we have some great manufacturers that can have the top of the line uh, multifocal designs, uh, anti-reflective coatings, uh, lens treatments. If you think of it, we can probably get it. Not probably, we can get everything, which is great. Uh, so now our program doesn't just teach you the theoretical background. It doesn't just teach you some hands-on for lab, but there is actually a clinical real world hands-on component where you're dealing with real patients, real eyeglasses, real refractive errors, real glasses. Um, in addition to all of this that we do, there's also a, uh, so, uh, a practicum class where there's a hands-on requirement to work in a real office uh, and a minimum of 200 hours. But the great part is most of our students are employed in the, in the field throughout the time that they're in the program part-time so that they can learn the theory but also get the uh, experience for the hands-on as well. So the chances are pretty good. If I am going to get my prescription filled, getting a pair of eyeglasses or contact lenses, I might have a Middlesex graduate be helping me on the other side of the table. Well, and, and as a matter of fact, is the, the, the longest running uh, uh, optical program in the state, 30 years, 30 plus years now, yeah. uh, with Ray and, 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 and Skip and the whole crew over there. Um, this has been uh, uh, in large classes, and this is really the, 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 the premier name in optician re-education. And we're planning on maintaining that and building upon that. And again, like you said, if you go to a place that has a licensed optician or an optical shop, there's an unbelievably high chance that you're going to run into uh, a Middlesex graduate. Mm -hmm. And you guys on the faculty here are pretty well connected with the industry, whether it's you know the lens manufacturers or contact lenses is, is a specialty mm -hmm. here. So there's all sorts of continuing education you guys do to stay current sure. in the field, right? And as a matter of fact, that's part of the licensing requirement. Um, all of our uh, Licensed opticians have to keep uh, continuing education requirements, so they have to keep uh, active in the field. And that's something I really promote. Not just coming and getting a job, but becoming part of a profession, part of an eye care field. Um, and not only that, but some of us lecture on the lecture circuit as well. So I, I speak all over the country um, and, and, and help give uh, continuing education credits. But I also have to get my own as well. So this is one of those things where this is a lifelong endeavor. We challenge people to continue keeping at the cutting edge even after they leave. Uh, and we also always encourage all of our students to continue their, uh, some folks, they, they are going to continue on to become, to get a bachelor's degree. Some are going to continue on to a master's degree. And that lifelong learning is something that we really grasp onto in our program. We sort of live it, we preach it, 
and it's something that Middlesex does, but our program does uh, as well. Absolutely. And I think, you know, part of that lifelong commitment, I think one of the hallmarks of this program in 30 years is giving back. Oh. And uh, talk a little bit about the community outreach, both locally and internationally, really, sure. that this program is known for. Well, and, and I couldn't, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Ray Dennis again. Mm -hmm. uh, Ray Dennis, who was the program coordinator for 30 plus years, um, he is really uh, uh, the lion uh, and a titan of industry when it comes to his background in uh, mission work and service work. Um, I've actually been the president of a, a local Lions Club. I've gone on some missions, but nothing I've done ever compares to what, what Ray does. Ray is a professor emeritus still, mm -hmm. uh, and he's gone to Tanzania, Haiti, Ecuador, uh, 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 all, sort, all over the world, actually South Dakota to the uh, yeah. uh, uh, Rosebud Indian Reservation. I've had the pleasure to go on a number of missions with him, and we absolutely plan on COVID permitting, mm -hmm. uh, uh, safety issues permitting, but each of our school uh, class, uh, many of our students come with us, many of our alumni, a lot of our faculty go on these, other members of the community, and it's the ability to not only get a job for yourself, not only get a profession and, and something that you can be proud of, but you also get to give back to the community as well. Uh, and whether it's the local community, whether it's the national community, whether it's the international com community, this is something we really take pride in. Great. So if someone's listening or watching this show is really interested in what they're hearing, um, how would they get um, involved? How might they apply to the college, get more information? And, and what kind of student are you looking for? So great question. Uh, the biggest, easiest way to reach us is right through our website, mxcc.edu, or my personal email is aacito at mxcc.edu. So email is great. Our enrollment services is, is, is a great avenue. Um, and as the type of student, Really, there's something for everybody in this group, uh, in, this, in this profession. Again, you can work in a private practice, you can work in a doctor's office, you can work in a corporate, you can work as a sales representative, you can work in manufacturing. Uh, really, anybody who has a, a, a need, to, a desire to work in a healthcare field. Uh, also, we, uh, there is a strong math component, so we do need people that have some math skills. You don't have to, like, I always use the, the phrase, you don't have to be Stephen Hawking smart, mm -hmm. but you do need to be relatively good at math. Uh, and that's one of the, the, the uh, but people who love science, people who love working with their hands, people who like working with other people, people who um, love challenges and, and, and problem solving, because there's a lot of that. Uh, there's really something for everybody in this, in this industry. Okay. And do the classes start fall and spring or just fall or how does that work? So we generally start in fall uh, uh, every year because it's a very uh, regimented uh, program. So one class leads into the next, leads into the next. So we always start our new cohort in fall. Uh, so our next classes that will be available to start for someone who's interested would be fall of 2021. Okay. Yeah, so let's say if someone really wanted to do that, they would call you for some more information, mm -hmm. maybe apply to the college, take that math class if they need a refresher, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then get going next fall. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So um, I really want to thank my guest, Dr. Arlen Aceto, who's director of the Alphalmic Design and Dispensing Program, for talking about the program, giving, giving us a tour of the facility, and uh, you know, for being actually a graduate of the college, now in charge of a program that you graduated from. Which Absolutely, is pretty cool. 30 years ago, well, close to 30 years ago, uh, and couldn't think of anything else I'd rather be doing. So I really appreciate the opportunity to show you all around, and hopefully, uh, uh, whether it's you want to be a student, whether you need a pair of eyeglasses, or whether you just want to come to Middlesex for any program, uh, we'd welcome you to reach out and, 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 and touch base with us. Okay. And in this time of COVID, I think someone's got to invent windshield wipers for oh, your glasses because my there. eyeglasses are fogging up <laughs> from the mask. But uh, thanks very much, Dr. Arlen Aceto. Thank and thanks to our audience, those of you watching or listening to Middlesex Moments. As always, feel free to visit us at our main campus at 100 Training Hill Road here in Middletown. Uh, bring your mask with you and remember to stay socially distant from people who are near you. You can also visit our Meriden Center located at Platt High School, where we have classes four nights a week from 2.30 to 8.30. And you can certainly visit us anytime 24-7 at mxcc.edu. So on behalf of everybody here at Middlesex Community College, I'm Steve Minkler, and we hope to see you again soon.